actors and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Hi, welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm CJ. And I'm Chip. And we're going to begin the hot seat uh, episode, uh, the Friday episode, our guest episode, by informing you that unfortunately uh, we don't have a guest. Uh, we had two <laughs> guests lined up, and uh, uh, the first guest uh, has a relative in the hospital and told us, and the second guest was City Councilor Dan Rigo. And we were looking forward to that with all the controversy that's been running around lately about uh, uh, what's going on and uh, but unfortunately he had a he had an issue at home um, a maintenance issue that he he can't get away and he just called us a few minutes ago and said uh, you know he tried but he can't so I guess we will either have to interview the skull or we're gonna have to we're gonna have to fly by the seat of our pants without a guest tonight but we're pretty good at that so uh, why don't we uh, why don't we get this why don't we get this show on the road and, and talk about what's been going on you know the the uh, the recall is is winding the time limit is winding down um, we've got in excess of 5,000 signatures um, uh, we've got a weekend coming up that we could get MOA uh, we're hoping to get 6,000 and there has been a lot of action a lot of action so I'm gonna I'm going to turn it over to CJ so he can bring you up to speed on some of the action and then I'll comment. <laughs> well, um, we're taping this on Friday um, and broadcasting live on Friday and um, that gives us four days left in that uh, tire recall process. It's just been very interesting some of the things that have gone on over the past couple of days um, which have been very questionable at the very least. Um, Several people who have signed the petition have received phone calls or have been uh, physically confronted with their signatures on the petition. Um, if they received a phone call, how they signed uh, was described to them at length. Um, and they, you know, they were advised on how to sign properly, um, how to alter their signature. Uh, so it's, it's very interesting. But I have to question um, how these people got copies of the petitions because I know where our copies are and nobody has access to those, um, not even Chip. <laughs> uh, so where, how are the copies getting out of the elections office um, to these people to be confronting um, various individuals who have signed the petition? And that pops into my mind a, 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 a question of security um, and how credible is the elections office going to be, especially seeing that Liz Camara has made a statement on WSAR um, that she was overwhelmed with the state primary and with this recall process. Now she advised us that she hadn't processed any of the recall petitions uh, as of yet, yet she goes on the air uh, with WSAR, I guess, yesterday, and states that, oh no, we've processed a few. Now, in every election I've been in as a candidate um, or as a volunteer on a candidate's committee, uh, the elections office has always made available to the candidate or the candidate committee the number of signatures which have been certified to date. With this particular situation, Liz has said she's not telling anyone anything about how many signatures have been certified to date. And oddly enough though, copies of the petition are now starting to circulate around the Flanagan camp. Uh, so I have to ask myself, how is this happening? Then it's announced by the Herald News um, that one of the election commissioners is being replaced uh, by attorney Gregory Brilliant. And for those of you who remember attorney brilliant um, he was replaced by the mayor on a different board and he attempted to get a pension through diamond uh, vocational high school 
by saying he was a full-time employee, uh, which the retirement board and I guess the state rejected. Um, so again, I have to question, why the change all of a sudden in the middle? Then we're hearing that uh, Attorney Brilliant may, be, may have been serving on this board for the past year without uh, approval of the city council, which would then make it illegal. So now I have to question how reliable is the election commission in Fall River at this point in time? And Secretary Galvin has failed to make any comments or return any phone calls to the several times that I have made them uh, to the press office. So again, we have to question what's happening in Fall River. Well, you know, uh, obviously uh, there seems to be uh, some, uh, at least the appearance of several improprieties here uh, and also uh, no consistency. Why, if in many other and virtually all that we know of, uh, attempts to secure signatures for whatever purpose, even the signatures we secured to uh, about the fire chief's position being removed from civil service, we got updates, periodic updates on how many were certified. Um, as far as the, the people who were on the board, uh, again, we have another issue here. Uh, and if he was on the board and hasn't been certified again, another example of not following procedure of not doing the right thing, not following the law. And it, it, it casts a shadow of doubt over the entire process now. So it's gonna force us probably to call in other people to oversee this. I know that, um, you know, we are, uh, you know, we have already contacted the American Civil Liberties Union about this entire process and the, the, uh, the other issues that are going on in addition to this. So now it, it makes me uncomfortable to think about are these signatures going to be going to be certified properly? Because the way it's always done is you have to err on the, on the side of the voter. Uh, if it's legible, you count it. If they're going to start being ridiculous and, and what makes this even worse and corroborates this, this fear is the mayor saying that, you know, 60% are going to not get certified and one out of three aren't going to get certified, which uh, only one out of three, which is 66.6%. Uh, so all these, all these different numbers are going out, but the, the bottom line is he's saying that basically most of these signatures are going to be thrown out before they've even been looked at, supposedly. Well, you know, this has become such a, you know, Quagmire. Yeah, well, I, I was going to use a different phrase, and I was looking for something to replace it, so I appreciate that, Chip, because what I would have used would have been kind of nasty, and it's actually the mm -hmm. title of a show here on <laughs> Fall River uh, Community Media. Um, but when we look at this, you know, this is a legal process. And, you know, there are so many other things going on in Fall River, too, that we have to question, and we have to say, you know, why is this happening? I mean, this morning alone, um, a local organization said, why is your organization using your organization's functions as the base of operations for uh, this recall process? That call came from the mayor's office, which is illegal. This is a campaign, Mr. Mayor. Don't you know the law? Your office cannot intimidate people in this fashion. You are trying to intimidate people. It is illegal. I noticed recently that your Facebook page changed from a, your personal page now to a government page, which I know many candidates previously against you have said you use that page illegally. I guess you now have figured out that, ooh, it is illegal. So now that page can only have information on it from the city hall's sixth floor about what's going on in Fall River, not your political campaign fundraisers, like the $200 pl uh, a plate down at the Cove. This is getting to be very pushy. And it's very intimidating of people when your supporters are going out there saying that they're being harassed but can provide no documentation. Yet, when we provide documentation to the Fall River Police Department of your brother tearing apart a petition and harassing a volunteer, they, can't, they don't do anything. Amazingly, because it's your brother. 
when your sister-in-law turns around and private messages me and tells me about, you know, it's inappropriate for them to attack your nephew, which he wasn't attacked, and then your brother gets on and says, you know, if you message her one more time, that will be that. Oh, I'm scared. This isn't acceptable behavior for your office. This isn't acceptable behavior through your supporters, and it's definitely not acceptable behavior for you. Well, let me weigh in on this now, okay? Um, there, there seems to be a little, you know, uh, there, you know, it's the old, the old projection in psychology, the projecting what they're doing. It's ironic that they're talking about intimidation, yet on one of the uh, pro don't recall or whatever euphemism they're using, uh, to to uh, to say that you know we want to keep the mayor, which obviously we've always said you're entitled to that. If you think he's doing a great job, if you love your taxes, if you love your fees, if you love your, your the the color of the bags, fine. You know you have every right to do that. Go out and vote. That's what we want. You know, we've heard him talk all, all the time about his 72 percent and 69 percent, which is crap, because we all know that <laughs> you know. 38,000, basically, you know, about about 40,000 voters or 30,000 voters didn't even vote in the last election, which means they wanted neither candidate. Right. Well, they were so apathetic. So don't don't let's not go with the numbers and the statistics because we've got about 75 percent of the vote that you got to get elected already in signatures. So uh, let's not go there. But the fact is, it was one of your pages that said, and I believe I'm paraphrasing. Uh, but I believe I'm, I'm pretty close. This is war, and all petitioners will be attacked. Now, does that mean verbally? Does that mean physically? It doesn't matter. It's a threat. When your office or you personally call a business and threaten them and ask them why they're being used as a base of operations, it's a public, they, they rent the hall as part of their business. They didn't, they didn't give us the hall for free. They didn't donate the hall. They didn't stand there with banners saying recall Flanagan. They rented the hall. So now anybody who rents a hall to someone with a differing opinion of you is going to be accused of being a base of operations? Like there's some clandestine mission being being perpetrated on your administration. I don't think it's clandestine. We're pretty upfront. We want you out. We want you to take your $500 towels <laughs> and put them in your own bathroom, wherever that is. It's, you know, it's, it's crazy because when you, when you look at what's happening in Fall River right now, we have a, a building on Bay Street, which needs to be demolished. And then they start the demolition thinking it's gonna cost $24,000 and then I guess nobody did any due diligence. And then the wrecking company turns around and stops and says, we can't do it because there's asbestos all over the place. And then they go right back to you to get $44,000 more or $40,000 more to do it. And you say it's an emergency and you approve that. Where's that gonna come from? Where's that gonna come from? Well, here we, here we are again. The, the gross incompetence of everything that happens on the administrative level of this city but if you're a worker and you did half of that, you'd be fired. But we have a law department that blew an $800,000 grant, blew another 100000 on appeal, and I believe someone wrote it, uh, the, the finding from the mayor investigating it was no human error. There was no human error. Well, who else was involved in this procedure? Did we have any robots working on this? Maybe a few so, monkeys. You know, <laughs> but, but there was no human error. I sat in the city council chamber and heard the corporation council and the assistant corporation council said they didn't have one shred of document, documented evidence. They didn't put anything in writing. Who does an $800,000 transaction without any documentation? And as I said before the council then, and I'll say it again today, every time I go see a lawyer, I have to fill out an affidavit to get to the bathroom. But they didn't, they didn't, get, any, they didn't get any documentation 
and then they're trying to contact somebody who hadn't worked for the company for three months and they didn't know he was he was no how how much do you investigate now we have a building that we want to demolish heaven forbid we check the site for hazardous materials and the building for hazardous materials more incompetence and what are you going to do pay raise when the, when the water department blew the grant that could have paid for about 80% of the CSO, which is about, I don't know, it's more than 50% of our budget and our liability, they blew the grant because he was on vacation. He's gotten numerous pay raises over the years. When a law department blows an $800,000 opportunity and then spends another 115 trying to win an unwinnable case, they get pay raises. So you wonder why? We're saying that you are not abiding by your fiduciary responsibility to this community. I mean, that, I mean the, the, the la and you're a lawyer. That's mind boggling that you don't follow procedure. If attorney Brilliant has been on the board for a year and he's required to be certified for the city council, why hasn't he been? You're gonna make sure every signature's right you're going to hire a handwriting expert. You're going to contest every signature. You're going to go hold us to the letter of the law. You are going to take us to court on the interpretation of the law and every little piece of minutiae you can, because that's what lawyers do. They delay and make arguments. And you're going to try to delay this until it becomes futile. It's almost, it'll be almost election time. But you can't figure out you have to abide by the law when you're running the city? That's what's wrong. Okay. So the question then becomes, who are they answerable to? Now, I know when I spoke to the Bar Association, the Bristol Board of Bar Overseers, or the Board of Bar Overseers, the BBO. Yeah, the Board of Bar Overseers. Yeah, the Board of Bar Overseers. They turned around and said that, um, corporate counsel is only answerable to the mayor because the mayor hired her. Well, I think there's a conflict of interest there. And a lot of people don't want to speak about it, okay? But in the nature of transparency, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to ask you, on behalf of the people of Fall River, for a full description of your relationship with corporate counselor Elizabeth Souza. We want to know what it is, and we want it out of your mouth. We don't want to have innuendo. We don't want to have questions. We want it directly from you. The people of Fall River want to know all the signatures on those petition. All those people want to know. Because, Mr. Mayor, the innuendo, uh, innuendo the rumor mill, is creating a problem with credibility on your part. When we look at what's happening to our city and we look at the people that are being put into places where they have questionable backgrounds, we have to say, why? When people are offered positions and jobs so that they can get you information on what I or Chip or the committee is doing, I have to question the credibility there. What is going on? Because a house on Bay Street loaded with asbestos was said, oh, it's $24,000, and now it's sixty-four or $68,000, and nobody knew? Nobody knew? I find that hard to believe. And then the EPA turns around and says, we're not going to do anything. We're going to stop now because the smokestack over at the King Philip Mill may fall down. And you're saying, who's going to pay for it? You own it. You took it. You own it. Didn't anyone think about that? Well, you know, uh, personally, if you really want to know what I do, just give me a call. You know my number. You've called me before. I'm not hiding anything. And as I said, as far as I'm concerned, this isn't personal. I had a we we had a hamburger at the beer summit, and I didn't drink a beer, but because I don't like American beer. <laughs> you know, but if you want to take me to Germany, I might. No, <laughs> but uh, 
It's nothing personal. I, I just don't believe you're doing a good job. I haven't since after your first term when you ran on the platform of, I really screwed up my first term, give me another chance. But you've actually continued to do the same thing. So, you know, that's, you know, if I have a TV guy that lives next door to me and he can't fix my TV, I'm not going to bring my TV to him because he's my neighbor. But I'll go over and, 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 and uh, go to a cookout and I'll invite him to my cookout. I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing personal here. And but that's a problem with people in Fall River. And, you know, they are personalizing it, and some people, and I understand some of these people are looking at this as an attack on their livelihood because they've gotten jobs that they probably don't deserve, or most likely don't deserve. And we, we see a lot of these high-paid high positions and political positions that may disappear if you disappear. So they're taking it personally. But, you know, it's the right of, every, of the citizens uh, to, to speak, just as... CJ just said the Board of Bar Overseers said that the Corporation Council is only answerable to you. Uh, I don't think that's true. Uh, but the problem is that's where you come with the old adage, you can't fight City Hall. There are very, you know, I, I'm not a, you know, I don't really care about uh, monetary things. And, and to me, the, the, it's, it's better to be, be happy. Uh, and, and, and do what you want to do in life and say what you have to say. But these are the times that I wish I was Rupert Murdoch or somebody <laughs> because I'd like to have enough free cash to take these kind of things to litigation and go to the Supreme Court and, and say that because I don't believe that a corporation counsel who is rendering, rendering opinions for the city of Fall River works for you you may hire her, she may work at your discretion, but our state constitution again says everybody, including judicial, everybody is answerable to the public. And the fact is, you love to ignore the law. The Housing Authority, who is now, who is now being run by one of your appointees, who was appointed with no experience to that position, is ignoring a Massachusetts Supreme Court decision in blocking us from entering the high-rises, even though that decision is clear. And it's not appealable because it's already been rendered by the SJC of Massachusetts, and it violates not only the United States Constitution, but it violates Article 77 and Article 9 of the Massachusetts Declaration of Rights. And that's in the legal opinion. And it says that only the person who lives in the dwelling has the right to say, you know, come in or leave, leave me alone. And that the, pe the solicitors have the right to knock on doors, and it's been done since this country w was established. And that right supersedes your right to make any kind of regulations which prohibits people who are attempting to enter into some kind of uh, political action or even a religious action, it actually said in the opinion. So, uh, you know, this, this is just... You know, it's inexcusable because the people that are working on this are people who go to work every day, come home, and are interested in this thing, not because they're looking for a job, because these people don't want a political job. Most of them, 99% of them, have no political aspirations. They don't want to be city councilors. They don't want to be congressmen. They don't want to be the mayor. They just want to know that when they pay their taxes and their water fees and buy their bags, that their tax money is, is keeping firefighters on a job, not lawyers, keeping police officers on the job, not neighborhood liaisons, not 14 different consultants in every department. You know, they're just taxpayers who are just tired and, and of, of constantly being attacked and on the radio, you made the statement, we have to make a choice between paying more taxes and getting services. You're wrong. There is another alternative. Streamline government. We didn't have a neighborhood liaison for years. Get rid of most of the law department. Pay them what they deserve. You don't hire somebody out of law school for 70 grand when the, the starting salary at the DA's office where they actually have to have like 100 cases is like 35. There is an option. 
And that's why the people are upset at you. So when you, if you're watching today, and I know you watch most of the time, if you're not watching live, I'm sure you're going to be watching it at some point in time. There is another option, Mr. Mayor. It's not a choice of firefighters, police officers, or pay more. It's a choice of how we spend our money. That's your problem. You don't get it. Well, you know, the credit card just keeps going on and on and on, and Fall River just keeps paying, paying, paying. And that's where our problem exists. Um, you know, just those two problems alone with the King Philip Mill and that home on Bay Street, that's all money that nobody looked at, nobody thought about, nobody planned for. You know, and they keep, they're running saying everyone else has got to pay for it. You know, you have the entire state delegation, Alan Sylvia, Paul Schmidt, Carol Fiola, and Mike Roderick, all trying to get the federal delegation to find some money for us. This is the problem. It wasn't your problem, Mr. Mayor. This was Ed Lambert's problem. That's when this problem occurred, okay? And a certain individual that is still in city employment didn't file the paperwork to get approximately $160 million to pay for this project. That would be 80% of it. Wouldn't that have been a lot easier? But we keep this person working. He's still working. He still has his job. And he, like the rest of the administration, threatens to fire people, lay people off, turn us over to the state if he doesn't get more money. And the recommendation right now that is coming out of the Water Department and your administration, this is your administration, Mr. Mayor, is that the water fee the CSO fee, I don't want to call it the water fee, the CSO fee is going to go up to $75 a quarter, $300 a year to pay for what God puts on the earth for free. I have a problem with that because of financial mismanagement. And granted, that mismanagement has not occurred because of your administration, but it has continued because of your administration. We can't keep doing this. We can't keep running to Uncle Sam and saying, please, we need it. You were told that with a safer grant. Make a plan. And what did you do? Nothing. Yeah. And, you know, obviously when you go to the feds and, you know, I am not, you know, uh, you know, I am a firm believer in, look, let's try to get some more money. We're probably not, though, because think about it. You say that they laugh at Fall River. Why do they laugh at Fall River? Because we're ridiculous. You had four years of a safer grant. It, it, it dries up, and then they say, well, you didn't do anything for four years, we told you, and you still don't have a plan. Well, it's the same thing with the CSO. You're going to go up there and say, geez, we need the money, you know, and they're going to go, didn't you guys have a grant available? And you're going to go, oh, yeah, by the way, you had a guy just, he was on vacation. You didn't think it was important enough, 180 million bucks. wasn't important enough to, to, to make sure they had that grant in place before he went on vacation. Screw the taxpayers. And guess what? And they're going to go, and what happened to him? Oh, by the way, yeah, he's still working, and I just gave him a pay raise. Yeah, so what is the federal government going to go? What are these buffoons doing? I mean, this guy was derelict in his duty and his responsibility to the public. And not only is he still working, he's got numerous pay raises over, over the course of his career since then. It didn't start with your administration, but it should have finished with it. And with that, sign a petition, people, because, you know, the times they are a changing. Thank you for watching. We're always here. We're here to listen to you. And if you got comments, please call our phone number. Let us know. Send us an email. We want to hear from you. This show is not just about the recall. It's about the city of Fall River. And it's about the taxpayer. Thank you. Great weekend.